housekeeping, just reminding everyone to switch off their mobile phones. And there is also a toilet located in the cafe at the back of the store. On behalf of Readings and Ex Libris, I'd like to welcome you tonight's launch of Beyond Courage, written by Chris Lancashire. When approached about hosting this launch, we were touched and delighted. We first met Chris six years ago for an Ian Gawler talk. This is also has great personal meaning to us as my manager Desi lost her son to a rare cancer back in 2002. To tell us more, please welcome her husband Jim. Uh, a warm welcome and uh, thank you for coming this evening. This evening, uh, my wife Chris will be launching a book, uh, Beyond Courage, a book which started life as a journal of our son's Andrew's cancer fight against osteosarcoma, and then into a book. A book which chronicles his courageous fight against his disease and to highlight and raise funds for this forgotten cancer. It is a cancer primarily of the young, teenagers and young adolescents. I am very proud and humbled to introduce my wife, whose determination and spirit has seen this book come to fruition. But before that, I am very pleased to invite Kate to say a few words about her work with On Track at, Peter, at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. Kate Thompson. Kate Thompson is a manager of On Track at the Peter McCallum Victorian Adolescent and Young Adult Cancer Service. A social worker by training, she has specialised in the area of oncology for the past 12 years and adolescent and young adult oncology for the past eight years. Kate plays a leadership role in the development of targeted services for young people, both within Victoria and nationally. She currently sits on the Clinical Oncology Society of Australia National Adolescent and Young Adult <laughs> Steering Committee <coughs> and the Victorian and Tasmanian Statewide Advisory Board. She is an investigator on a number of research products, projects in adolescent and young adult cancer care which are currently funded through Cancer Australia, National Health Medical Research Council and the Federal, Federal Department of Health and Aging. I now invite Kate to say a few words. Thank you, Jim. And um, I didn't write that myself, <laughs> but what I can say is I'm absolutely invested in cancer in young people and as a society addressing the issues that it brings for us. So thank you, Chris and Jim, for the invitation to come along tonight um, to be part of this launch for Beyond Courage, which is really a book written by a mother detailing a young man's courage in the absolute face of adversity following a diagnosis of osteosarcoma. This disease, although rare, uh, predominantly affects the younger population and particularly those aged 15 to 25 and has by comparison one of the most devastating treatment trajectories that we see in the field of cancer care, which is actually equivalent to the often devastating outcomes that we see. Beyond Courage. It's a raw, honest, and at times confronting book. And I say that as a healthcare professional who's worked in the field for a number of years. As we hear the story of a mother walking alongside her son going through this cancer journey for a period of over 15 months. It details the challenges, not only for Andrew, but also for those around him. But what it does do, and I have to say, is it details resilience. And it tells the story of a young man. And it tells the story of a young man who, outside his cancer diagnosis, was amazing. I learnt a lot about Andrew in this book. <laughs> and for someone who often saw him on the ward, confined to a bed, undergoing chemotherapy, to hear the story of a young person's life outside that environment is absolutely imperative. Two weeks ago, almost five years, 
since I last saw Chris, she contacted me to let us know that her manuscript was now finally complete. And I have to say, I've now read the book and I've shared it with my team. I've shared it with my orthopaedic surgeons, colleagues. I've shared it with my medical oncologists. And I've shared it with two of my colleagues who are here tonight. And many of those, cared, those clinicians cared for Andrew. And many who didn't will be caring for young people diagnosed with cancer as we move into the future. So it's an absolute privilege, Chris and Jim, for me to be here. It's a privilege to honour the memory of a young man who so courageously uh, went through the cancer experience. And I have to say, for those of you who have read the book, I haven't written this, but tonight on the way, I, with my colleagues, caught a taxi outside the Park Height. And I walked up those stairs. And there's a point in this book where Chris details walking up those stairs with Andrew. And in my own little way, I felt as though he was walking with me tonight. Thank you. And I promised I wouldn't cry. <laughs> Now I'll give you the author of Beyond Courage, my gorgeous wife, Chris Mack. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you, and I'm very, very humbled and honored for such a lovely introduction about me and Andrew and his legacy in the book, Beyond Courage. Thank you, Leslie. It is so gracious of you, Kate, to consent to speaking after two weeks in a short notice. So I thank you very, very much. Thank you. Good evening and thank you everyone for coming and joining me at my book launch of Beyond Courage. This is a very special day for us. Jim and I chose this place, Readings, to launch my book because of his very sentimental connection to it. About six years ago, we came here with Andrew for a book launch of Dr. Ian Gola. So it is a very significant time for us in that on the 23rd of November, this Saturday, is Andrew's fifth anniversary that he left this earthly school. He was a pilgrim. He came with a mission, but he left with a legacy. So today, Beyond Courage is launched here to commemorate and honor Andrew, our beautiful son, in spirit. We know he's here with us and always nearby. This is for you, son. Today is your day. I like to read a passage which is part of this book. And I believe, in fact, he had a major part in this evening's event happening in that I believe Andrew is showing me the way forward. So I'd like to read this page, this paragraph. One day coming home from his July 2008 appointment, Andrew turned around to me and said, what are you going to do when I go back to university to complete my honors? Mom, are you going to be lazy or are you going back to work? Andrew had a knack of coming up with things especially requiring some thoughts from the person with their reply. The next thing he said completely blew me away. I was not expecting this profound question and certainly where I had nowhere to go or hide as I was driving in the car, driving us, I was in the car driving us home. What are you going to do when I die? It was not a question that I was expecting for from Andrew at this point. 
whole thing to work out how I respond to Andrew was important. He cared and asked the tough question. He wanted to know how I would handle this. It would have meant a lot to him in his knowing. Responding to how I felt at that moment, I said, I will probably go back to work when you go back to university. That was the easy part. My response to his second question was, Andrew, you're not going to die for a long time yet, as you have many wonderful years ahead of you. There are others that lived for a long time, but they have not lived their lives. You lived your life. However, if you do die, I do not know what I'm going to do. I'm sure you will show me the way. Andrew Neal. So tonight's event, I believe he is showing Jim and I the way forward. So this book is not about me anymore. It belongs to the readers and their experiences in life. Not just here in Australia, but throughout the world now, because his book is published. So it will spread throughout the world, hopefully, that with this book, it will tell his story. This book chronicles the life of an amazing, courageous and inspirational young man who went through 15 months of grueling bone cancer called chondroblastic osteosarcoma. His young life was cut short at 22 years, three months due to this very aggressive bone cancer. Andrew thought and showed us how to live through this tragedy with extreme courage and fortitude. He showed us how to live life to the full with the little time he knew he had left. The aim of this book, Beyond Courage, is on several levels. It chronicles Andrew's palpable courage and fortitude throughout his 15 toughest months of his life in this cancer journey. Andrew was the future net generation, but he never was given a chance because of this aggressive bone cancer. It aims to highlight and raise awareness of this aggressive bone cancer, osteosarcoma, and all forms of sarcoma, one of the 15 forgotten cancers under the Forgotten Cancer Project, launched by the Cancer Council Victoria in August 2011. In this project, bone cancer and the other 14 cancers were chosen because of its poor survival rate and limited understanding of their causes. It aims to raise awareness of this very much under-researched and underfunded section of all cancer fundings in Australia, as in indicated in the book. So Beyond Courage also forms part of an ongoing fundraising campaign towards finding an improved treatment and cure for osteosarcoma and all sarcomas. The funds raised or donated goes towards Peter McCallum, Cancer Centre Australia, through Andrew James Lancashire Memorial Fund, a sub-fund of the Lord Mayor Charitable Foundation. Through Andrew's Memorial Fund, we see Andrew living on through this legacy by giving to others in so many different ways forever. And we are so proud of him as he continued to show Jim and I, and all his families, friends, and loved ones, the way. I know Andrew would be so proud for this wonderful turnout 
as we can see here today. I'd like to especially thank Desi Boardman, the manager of readings, Joel and Christine Gordon, for all beyond courage here today in Hawthorne. I'm happy to take any questions and will try to answer them. Please enjoy the refreshments. I will shortly be doing the book signing and hope you will enjoy this book. Like Kate said, this book is all full of emotions. So the book now belongs to the readers and the experiences. Have a lovely evening. And thank you all so much for coming. Okay, so please thank Chris, Jim and Kate. And please, I urge you to buy a copy of this thought-provoking book. Uh, they can be purchased at the front counter. And thank you all very much for coming. <laughs>